Today, I have a build for you that quite literally dropped my jaw when I used it for the very first time. With the right setup and in the right situations, this Orpheus Rig Tether build can have you shooting supers within just five seconds of each other. That's not clickbait, nor is it exaggeration. You literally get your deadfall tether back before your first one is even off the field. Now, of course, not every single situation will net super returns of that magnitude, but on average, Average, I was finding that I was firing off a tether approximately every 20 to 30 seconds. And considering that the deadfall tether anchor can last on the field for up to 25 seconds, that worked more than fine for me. So allow me to walk you through all of the aspects, fragments, mods, and weapons that will take you to the promised land of five second supers. And just like you can command the battlefield with tether after tether, you can also command legions of over 2,000 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships in highly engaging PvP warfare in War Thunder, the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. War Thunder features a collection of vehicles that span over 100 years of development from the 1920s to present day machines and dons them all in 4K resolution, incredible graphics, realistic sound effects, and immersive music. My personal favorite vehicles and War Thunder are all of the crazy awesome fighter jets, and I know that you will love them too. And you can use all of them and more by playing War Thunder for free right now on PC, PS5, Xbox Series 1, X, and S, and previous gen consoles by signing up with my link in the description. Huge thanks to War Thunder. Now let's construct our OP Tether Hunter. The whole build obviously begins with the Deadfall Hunter Tether Super, which upon cast fires a single void anchor that pulls all enemies towards it and tethers them. Tethered enemies are weakened, suppressed, receive an extra 30% damage from all sources, and share 50% of all of their damage taken with other tethered enemies. So much for sharing is caring, right? Additionally, whilst the Deadfall Void Anchor that tethers enemies only lasts on the field for 12 seconds by default, tethered kills will increase the duration of the anchor by 0.5 seconds, up to a maximum of 25 seconds. Now that you know all about the Deadfall Tether Super, let's talk about the exotic boots that will have us shooting them off non-stop the Orpheus Rigs. These exotic boots are quite simple in their use, returning super energy for every tethered enemy up to a maximum of 50% of your total super bar. But what most don't know about the Orpheus Rigs is that they also refund 10% of your grenade, melee, and class ability energies for every enemy tethered as well. Do me a favor and consider hitting those like and subscribe buttons if you didn't know that about Orpheus Rigs before watching this video. Another Really important note to make about Orpheus Rigs is that these ability energy refunds will only occur when tethering currently untethered enemies. So if you have a teammate that is also running tether, or if you get your super back before your first tether leaves the field, be sure to fire your super at a pack of currently untethered enemies, as re-tethering already tethered mobs will not refund any ability energy. Now, I bet you're left thinking, wait, Mactix, how are we shooting off our super every 5 to 25 seconds if Orpheus rigs only refund 50% of our tether? And my response would be, one, that's not my real name, and two, that our fragments and mods will more than easily make up the rest of that super bar. The first fragment you'll want for this build is the Echo of Reprisal, which grants bonus super energy on kills when surrounded by enemy targets. Specifically, having three or more enemies within eight meters of you will begin to grant you bonus super energy on kills, with those energy gains increasing for every additional enemy nearby, capping out at seven enemies. And in a moment, we'll talk about how you can very safely be close enough to that many enemies consistently to make the most out of this fragment and keep your supers rolling. But first, let's take a look at fragment number two, the Echo of Harvest, which creates an orb of power and a void breach when defeating a weakened enemy, which with this build is going to be all of them. Unfortunately, this fragment does have a 10 second activation cooldown, but the practically passive bonus orb generation is extremely nice for fueling our rapid fire supers and some of the other benefits of this build. One of those other benefits being our third fragment, the Echo of Starvation, which grants the Devour buff when scavenging a Void Breach or Orb of Power. This Devour buff not only extends itself and grants a full HP heal on every kill, 
but also grants grenade energy for every kill as well. And speaking of grenades, you'll want to make sure to slot the Vortex Grenade in that slot for this build, as it is particularly exceptional when paired with the Deadbolt Tether that pulls all enemies together to easily be destroyed by your Vortex Grenade. Now for your fourth fragment, you have two options depending on which playstyle better suits your needs for whichever activity you are doing at the time. If you want to take a more aggressive and offensive approach, you'll aim for the Echo of Expulsion, which causes Void Ability Kills to create Void Explosions at the location of the defeated enemy, which works really well with the Deadfall Tether that pulls everything together, because tethered enemies that die as a result of the 50% tether damage share will count as Void Ability Kills and create these explosions. On the other side of the coin, Echo of Persistence is a fantastic defensive option to increase your invisibility and devour buff durations for increased survivability in more dangerous activities. Generally speaking, I like to lean towards persistence, especially in endgame and contest mode content, as it suits my personal playstyle much more than something like Expulsion does. Although I would encourage you to experiment with both to see which one feels more impactful to you. As for aspects, you'll want to kick things off with Trapper's Ambush to allow your melee ability to grant invisibility to yourself and teammates and to give you access to the quick fall air move, which as most of you longtime viewers of the channel know, we like to call the Shadow Dive. For aspect slot number two, we'll want Vanishing Step to simply go invisible when dodging, which when used with the Gambler's Dodge class ability, will also refund our Smoke Bomb to go invisible a third time once again through Trapper's Ambush. And it is these invisibility cooldowns that we will take advantage of to safely be close in the fight to make the most of our Echo of Reprisal Fragment to gain increased super energy on enemy defeats when surrounded by enemy targets. You might think that Stylish Executioner would be better here to go invisible when defeating weakened targets, aka every tethered target, but in my testing, I found the previously mentioned pairing to be much more effective and much more practical. The reason for this is that although Stylish consistently gives you invisibility when killing tethered targets, that doesn't really matter as a cluster of tethered enemies are suppressed, staggered, and dying so quickly that they aren't really posing a threat to you anyway. You want your invisibility to be easily accessible for the situations in which you do not have your tether, also known as situations in which Stylish is much more difficult to proc, leading to me favoring the aspects that offer me on demand man invisibility as opposed to circumstantial invisibility. Now the final thing we need to talk about before we get to our armor mods to guarantee instant tethers is our weapon choices, because there are two weapons in the game that I really enjoyed with this build. The first is one that you probably forgot even existed in Destiny 2, Bad Juju. If you don't remember, the Bad Juju's exotic perk is String of Curses, which grants a full magazine refill and a stack of String of Curses on every enemy kill. Each stack of String of Curses provides increased super gains per kill and a 20% weapon damage buff to Bad Juju, meaning that at its maximum cap of five stacks, you are dealing double damage with the weapon. That all being said though, this gun can definitely feel a bit lackluster in end game contest mode content, which is where we will instead look to the Wish Ender Exotic Bow. Over the last few patches, we've seen buffs to exotic weapon damage, kinetic weapon damage, and damage towards red bar enemies, all three of which benefit the Wish Ender Bow greatly. But although its incredible infinite ammo, long range damage, and built in anti barrier make it an amazing weapon, none of those are the reason we are pairing it with this build. The reason we love it for the infinite super Orpheus rig setup is that for whatever reason, this thing generates super energy like no other weapon in the game. And it's not even that it has bonus super energy gains from its exotic perk or anything of that nature. This thing just intrinsically deposits chunks of super energy into your bar like clockwork just for shooting enemies. Oh, and one more fun fact about Wish Ender, it over penetrates targets, meaning that when you shoot at that big clump of enemies pulled together by your deadfall tether, you're going to be hitting like 
five guys with the same arrow. I do, however, want to clarify that neither of these weapons are required for this build in any capacity. They complement the build quite nicely, but can totally be swapped out for whatever you prefer without hindering the performance of this build. What is definitely required, though, is our snazzy mod setup, beginning with Reaper on the class item, Firepower on the gloves, and a Weapon Siphon mod on the helmet for a multitude of ways to create orbs of power for increased super energy. And with Powerful Attraction also on the class item, we can use our dodge to collect all of those generated orbs of power. Slotting in two copies of Dynamo on the helmet will also grant even more super energy on that dodge dodge usage any time it is activated near enemies. And with a copy of Utility Kickstart on the class item, you'll be able to use your dodge even more often to proc powerful attraction to scavenge orbs and dynamo for that bonus super energy. And with two copies of Absolution and one copy of Innervation on the boots, scavenging those orbs will give loads of extra ability energy to all three of your basic abilities. You'll then wrap things up with momentum transfer and bolstering detonation on the gloves to refund a chunk of your melee and class ability energies respectively when dealing damage with a grenade, which is up quite frequently thanks to the regeneration from Orpheus Riggs, Devour, Absolution, and Innervation. You'll then round things out with resists on the chest and minor and major stat mods where applicable on each armor piece, prioritizing tier 10 resilience and then as high of a mobility and intellect stat as you can manage. And as always, there's a Destiny Item Manager link down in the description for you to copy it all over to your Guardian with just one click, right next to the like and subscribe buttons that you can gracefully graze while you're down there if you feel so inclined. Now before we wrap up, I really want to talk about the synergies that this build performs well with. As we stated before, Orpheus rigs only refund energy when tethering untethered targets, meaning that running this build with friends who are also running the build can be a bit tricky. That's not to say that it's against the rules entirely, you'll just need to make sure that you coordinate with your fellow Orpheus Hunter to make sure you are firing off your tethers at different times or in different locations. That being said, I absolutely love running this build in a composition where one teammate has a defensive super and the other has an offensive super. So for example, pairing your Orpheus Hunter with a Well of Radiance Warlock and a Thunder Crash Titan works exceptionally well, since the combo will basically be opening with a tether to pull all of the enemies together, placing the well to remain safe from any untethered enemies, and granting you a weapon damage buff as you shoot at them, and using the thunder crash to instantly one-shot everything in the tether. The hunter can then dodge to collect all of the orbs from the thunder crash and well of radiance, and be ready to fire off the next tether to rinse and repeat. Other combos that work well with the Orpheus Hunter are any combination of well of Radiance and Ward of Dawn for the defensive supers, along with things like Blade Barrage, Gathering Storm, Chaos Reach, Nova Bomb, Needle Storm, and Thunder Crash for the offensive supers. If you have any questions about any other team compositions or anything regarding this build in general, feel free to stop by my live stream and ask me there. And once again, I want to thank War Thunder for making this video possible, which you can once again experience in all of its glory for free on PC, Xbox, or PlayStation by signing up using my link in the description down below. I'll catch you in the live stream. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a great day.